you need to pay for the repair of these doors. You also have to paint the ceilings. There are spots that are still not painted. Oh my goodness, he just came out with this long list out of nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Hello and good morning everybody. If you just stumbled across this video and you've never heard of me before, my name is Jenna. I'm an international who has been living here in Germany since 2014. And over here on this channel, you'll find all of my stories as a foreigner, both the good and the bad. First things first, you're probably wondering why on earth my landlord or ex-landlord now is fining us 3,000 euros. I probably wouldn't even be telling you this story if it wasn't for the fact that this is not the first time that it will happen and it's definitely not the last time it happens to almost everybody that I know who decides to move out of their apartment so I wanted to create this video to let you guys know a my story so that you really understand okay this does happen you know in the welcome program that I built in this course that I've put together, I do, I go through everything you need to know to make sure that you go through the rental contract with a fine tooth comb and you make sure that all the information is in there that you need, that there's no legal obligations of you, that they're not going to keep your money at the end or what have you. I go through everything, all of the, you know, nitty gritty information that you need to know. But for some reason, that's not always enough. I think some people actually have to hear, you know, the story of it happening to somebody else before they actually realize. At least that's for me in my case. I have heard time and time again that when somebody moves out of their apartment in Germany, they often do not get their caution back or their deposit in English. And I always thought, oh, you know what? I'm the cleanest person ever. You know, I'm gonna paint the walls. I'm gonna leave everything in tip top condition. There is nothing, no reason that our ex landlord can complain about us having lived there and leaving it in a terrible condition. So let me tell you my story and then I'll go through some of the pointers that I've learned that hopefully you'll take away from this video. Um, basically, I was living in an apartment here in Dusseldorf with my husband and my son for about seven years now. We moved in, the apartment was not newly renovated, but the floors were in good condition, the walls were painted, and it was in a decent condition when we moved in. We were so excited just to have an apartment, and this is going to happen to you too, especially now that in larger cities in Germany, it can be quite difficult to find an apartment. It can also be even more difficult to find an apartment if you are a foreigner and you don't speak the language and they don't want internationals in the building. I know it sounds mean, but guys, unfortunately, it's true. Also from my landlord, they actually originally did not want me because I did not speak perfect German, and I don't know if it was because they were worried that I wouldn't be able to communicate in case anything went wrong, but they originally did not want to give it to us. It was simply, it was actually ended up being her daughter who wanted to accept us into the apartment. So we got lucky there and we took great care of our apartment. All in all, it was quite a normal living experience in an apartment here in Germany and we had no problems at all. We had some noise complaints because we have a child um, and if you guys have a child and this is something you're worried about, Please do not worry. Time and time again, I see everybody posting in these different Facebook forums um, on our Facebook forum here in Dusseldorf asking, what on earth do I do? You know, we're getting notice after notice, complaining about the noise of our child. There's not much we can do. You know, they cry at night. It just happens. Don't worry. There's nothing that anybody can do. They're kids. Even during quiet hour, it's hard. It really is hard. And my son has night terror. So in the middle of the night, he might scream for one to one and a half hours. Think about how I feel. I go absolutely insane. I'm like sitting there bawling my eyes out. My child doesn't know who I am. And then I have my landlord who lives below me hitting the ceiling roof with a broom. Like, oh my God, it was the most frustrating thing ever. Besides the point, other than that, we had no issues. So we purchased a house. If you've not seen that video, I will link it up here for you guys. Um, but we are in the middle of renovating it right now and we decided, okay, now is the time to move. So we made that move and we had a few months to move out of our apartment. We gave them three months notice and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, and we basically spent those three months moving all of our stuff out. I deep cleaned the apartment. I'm not sure if this is actually necessary. I think you have to leave it, of course, in good condition to give to the next tenant, but 
deep cleaning it the way I did, you definitely don't need to do. I just really did not want to have any problems because I've heard these horror stories before and I was sure that we were going to avoid it. We had about five of our handyman friends come over and help us paint the walls. Our walls were originally white. We had a few walls that were red, my mistake, dark green, again, my mistake, and light gray. So the rule in Germany is actually now, if it was renovated when you first got it, you need to hand it over in a light colored paint. So that's not necessarily white. It could also be gray. It could also be beige, but the darker you go, the more of a gray area you get into. So I would just recommend going with white. That's what we decided to do. So we painted all the walls white. We did not paint the ceiling. That is something I never thought about because that's absurd. Like I had no idea. And the Germans watching this video might think, okay, yeah, that's normal. Why is she so ausgerastet or why is she, you know, flipping out about this. Um, in Canada, the way it works is when you rent an apartment, you can actually hand it over at the end of your tenancy with painted walls, with dirty floors, with broken shelves. Like it is very different from Germany. And I assumed, you know, if we hand it over freshly painted, deep cleaned, we're not gonna have an issue. The landlord comes in or the Verwalter and he looks around and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, everything's good, no problems. And then he looks at the doors and he's like touching the doors and he's like, yeah, there's some chips in the lac here on the door. Why didn't you paint those? And I was like, well, these doors are like ancient. The white on the doors is no longer white. It's like this yellow from age. And I really did not expect to have to paint new lac on the doors. Apparently that doesn't fly here in Germany. So FYI, you also have to paint white lac on the doors. Another issue was what had happened was we took out some of the doors and put them in the cellar because there was just a lot of rooms, a lot of tiny rooms, and we wanted a bit more open. So we took the doors, we put them in our cellar. What happened is right before we were about to move out, one of the other tenants said, oh, well, I would like your cellar because it's a bigger space and mine is smaller. So can we switch before the new tenant comes in so they can get the smaller one? And I thought, yeah, of course, no problem. Don't worry. You know, our cellar is pretty much empty anyways. The only thing that we have left in there is the doors that we have to bring back up at some point. And he said, no, it's, a, it's no problem. You know, I'll move everything over. It's absolutely fine. So he moved them over from our cellar to his cellar um, and put them nicely on the floor against the wall. What had happened was a few weeks later, we had this massive flood in Germany. If those of you who don't know, NIV got hit pretty hard. Thankfully, Düsseldorf was not the worst. However, our cellar was absolutely flooded. That also meant that the doors were underwater. And in his tiny little cellar, there was also a window where the water came rushing out. So that destroyed the doors on the ground. And our landlord said, well, you know, unless you have home contents insurance, we're not going to cover this. You need to provide us with new doors. Doors in Germany, especially these older, you know, hefty, like really heavy, big, massive doors are very, very expensive. They can cost up to 500, 600, even 700 euros. The installation is a different conversation. I'm talking about the door alone. So these doors got even more flaked and even more destroyed because of the rainwater. And this was something that was totally out of our control. Like we were so busy with getting the apartment finished and ready that I didn't even think anything of it that he had then put them in the cellar and put them on the floor. To be honest, I didn't even go down there to check because why would I check? I had two or three doors down there that he moved. Cool. We've not had a problem for years and we had a problem. So those were two issues for our Favalta. And he then sent us an email afterwards saying, no, you know, I saw the doors again and this is not gonna happen. Like you need to pay for the repair of these doors. You also have to paint the ceilings. You have to repaint the walls. There's spots that are still not painted and this and that. And oh my goodness, he just came out with this long list out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. I was like mind blown. I was so shocked and actually offended because I put so much effort, my friends, my husband's friends, the handyman put so much effort into painting this fresh and leaving it in great condition. We spent well over 700 euros in order to do this. We even used it even more expensive paint that is washable for the next tenant, but no. It did not matter. So there's one more thing that we had issues with and that was the contract. 
we signed a contract and we didn't go through it with a fine tooth comb. This is something that you will hear time and time again, and this is something that you have to listen to, guys. We went through the contract very briefly. Everything looked good. I didn't read much German at the time, but my husband said it was no problem. The easiest thing to see was how many keys we were gonna get. And for some reason, I did not look at that, and neither did my husband. We were just so excited to get the apartment. It was at a great price. And they mentioned that we got seven keys for the main door of the building. We only got two. I don't know if it's because Germans write seven and two in a really weird way, like some, I don't know. Maybe they look the same, I'm not sure. Anyway, I am 100% positive that we only got two. I remember that specifically because two was not enough. I wanted to have a third and or a fourth so that I could give one over to my mother-in-law in case anything happened or when my mom or my family came to visit from Canada that they would also have a key to get in the building. I went to try to get a third cut, but nobody would cut it because it's a very specific, secure key that you can't replicate unless you go to some special place and pay a heck of a lot of money for it. So we didn't end up getting a third key, unfortunately, but our landlord is now claiming that we got seven keys and he really screwed us over because this is something that we didn't look at and we just signed the contract so quickly and to pay for those seven keys is going to also cost us hundreds if not thousands of euros. So as it stands now, he has charged us over 3,000 euros for the repairs on top of the seven, 800 that we already put in. And so the first thing you have to do, if you are part of a Mieterverein, if you're not, I highly recommend being a part of one before you sign any contract here in Germany. It costs probably about 60, 70, 80 euros a year, depending on where you live. There is one in each city. So we have the Mieterverein Düsseldorf that costs 66 euros a year. And basically they will take care of everything you need any legal questions you have regarding your rights as a tenant here in Dusseldorf or here in Germany. I was not part of this Mieterverein, even though this is something that I preach all the time. Um, I don't know why I didn't. I just had a million other things on my plate and then we had signed the contract and then I thought, you know, like we're not gonna have any issues. We are great tenants. You might be surprised how many great tenants run into the same issues as I did time and time again. So this is something I would really, really consider, guys. It's like 60 or 70 euros a year that you won't regret spending. If you make the same mistake as I did, then there is also something called the Verbraucherzentrale. So if you have one of these in your city, you should check ahead of time. They basically help you regarding many different legal aspects of your life, whether you've got screwed over on a purchase, on your rental, on your rental income, on an investment, a certain product, whatever that might be, they can help you with this. So they charge a relatively low fee for me. It's about 20 euros for a 15 minute conversation. Sounds steep, but when you're talking to a real lawyer, it can be a lot more expensive. And realistically, in regards to renting, these questions get asked time and time again, so they can easily answer it within 10, 15 minutes. Basically what he said is, you do have to leave the walls white and in decent condition enough so that you can hand it over. However, the quote that he has given you for this painting job is absolutely insane. He is absolutely trying to screw you over and keeping your caution or your deposit. He also wants more on top of the deposit, which is not gonna happen. So what you should do is contact another painter, send them in and get them to do the approval to say it's okay to be handed over to someone else now in this condition. If it's not, you're gonna get a much, much lower quote than the one that he just gave you. So that is also something to consider. If you're still fighting about it and saying, no, this is fine to hand over and he, say, and he or she is saying, no, it's not fine, bring in your own painters and get those quotes figured out. There are ways around this. Please guys, do not let these landlords or Favita screw you over, especially if you are foreign. I know that it can be very, very easy to get screwed over or to make these mistakes um, in this situation because for me as a Canadian, this is never something that I ever had to fight for or had to learn about. It was just a much, much easier process. So my takeaways would be, Go through your contract with a fine tooth comb, read absolutely everything. If you don't speak German, like I said, either bring it to a German friend to read through who knows their stuff when it comes to rental contracts or bring it to the Mieterverein for them to actually go through it themselves. Point number two would be make sure you know exactly what's included 
in your rental costs because as a foreigner, you might think that everything's included. I've talked about Warmmiete and Kaltmiete in my welcome program on lifeingermany.com. I go through this in very deep detail, exactly what needs to be included in a contract in order for it to be legal. But just make sure that you ask, you know, what's included in this price? What's included in the Warmmiete? Is it my electricity? Is it the Schornsteinfeger, the chimney sweeper? Ask all of these questions and make sure you have a thorough list of what is included. I've mentioned the Caution or your deposit. This can be first and last month's rent. It can also be three months rent. This is going to be your cold rent. So if you're paying 800 euros cold, then you're gonna have to pay 800 euros cold times two or three. They might make a different choice and say one month or four months, but it is going to be stated in your rental contract so that you are getting that amount back at the end if you don't get screwed over. Another good thing to know is that your landlord actually has to put that money into an interest gaining savings account. So they do not only have to pay you back your money, but also the interest gained on top of it over the course of the years that you've been living there. So it's always worth asking about that as well. And one last thing that I will mention is that when you want to end your tenancy, to end your contract, you have to give a minimum of three months notice, which means if you give them two weeks notice, they're gonna charge you for three additional months. So you always have to give them that three months notice ahead of time. And please, please do not do it per telephone or face-to-face. -face. Always make sure that this is in a written contract. You can send it by email, but I would recommend actually typing it out, printing it out, signing it, and sending it to your landlord or Favarta's house or work location to make sure that they actually did receive this letter. You can pay extra at the post office to make sure that they tell you exactly when the letter was hand delivered to the receiver. And also please don't forget there is one good thing about living in Germany and that is as a tenant, it is really, really hard to get kicked out. So as long as you are abiding by their rules and the contract is stated, you are paying your rent on time, there are not many ways for them to be able to kick you out. So just stay calm. And if you have any questions, I would say write them in the comment section below. But as you can see, even eight years later, I am still learning the system regarding this guy. So if you have a very specific question, as I mentioned, either go to your Verbraucher Central, I will leave the link down below, or sign up for the Mieter Verein. Some of them have rules that you have to be within the club for a few months in order to actually make a claim or ask for support. Check this out beforehand as well. But I really, really, really hope that this video helps you guys out when signing that rental contract. Thank you so much for listening. And let's just hope that things get settled with Arfa Vita. It's been going on for months. We haven't heard anything, but we'll see. Vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.